Hello, this is Deanna Kosaraju, founder of Global Tech Women. Welcome to Voices 2.0, year 2014. We're happy to have you here at this session, Women in ICT Leadership, Are We Nearly There? A couple things for you to know. Uh, there's a chat window over on the right-hand side, which Sonia's already taken advantage of. That's great. Um, we encourage you to, ha to chat and network with each other during this session. Um, there will also be a presentation that is displayed. That presentation can be dragged and dropped on your screen so that you can watch the speakers as you follow along with the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, you control the uh, where those slides go. So as they tell you slide two, etc., you need to advance the screen uh, with them because uh, you control your own screen. So I hope that's clear. Uh, a link to this recording will be available 30 minutes after the session closes. You can use the same link that you used to get in here, so uh, that will be available to you. And feedback about the session and about any of the sessions as well as this conference are welcome. You can email me at deanna at globaltechwomen.com. You can join our illustrious Facebook group, which is growing leaps and bounds the last few months, and we have some very interesting uh, discussions on news items around the world about women in tech. And with that, I will uh, move this on to our illustrious panel, and uh, they will talk all about women in ICT leadership and are we nearly there? So take it away. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, it's um, evening 7 p.m. in Australia here. Um, we have three speakers. Um, my colleagues are here, Arati and Arvena. Hi. Um, hello, Arati and hello, Arvena. Hi, Chandana. Hi. Um, hi. Okay. Um, so we three of us uh, had got together at some point um, to do a survey. Um, we called ourselves uh, Equal Professionals in IT. And we started um, to look at the survey where, um, which is slightly different from um, other surveys, as well as capturing um, the problems with women in ICT specifically, and um, looking at how they can rise to leadership positions. So women have long been true that they are capable, they're equal in the professions, uh, but um, it's been a constant struggle in many ways. And there are challenges that are attitudes they face seem to be quite different. So we started uh, to look at this survey. And the uniqueness of the survey is that we try to look at the perception of capturing the voices of men as professionals, as well as women, in the same area. So, um, And we did have a few results uh, unfolding themes uh, from the survey, which we are talking about today. So the objective of the um, survey was uh, to look at uh, equal professionalism and looking at the enablers and inhibitors in a different countries. So we mainly focused on India and Australia and um, also some parts of the US. Um, we looked at exploring gender perspectives on enablers and inhibitors for women rising into leadership positions and the perception gaps. The participation usually um, currently, the, part, the survey is still open, the participation currently reflects that the major proportion is from India, or if it is overseas, it is um, people of Indian origin. Um, the perceptions we looked at is what inhibits women from taking up leadership positions, what motivates them, <coughs> what do male professionals think about women leadership, what are the expectations from women, are the perceptions of women and men uh, converging at some point, what are the perception gaps and its implications. So where we cut off the survey to do an analysis was there were a total of uh, 159 respondents at the time. There were female, um, 66 uh, female members and 93 male members when we started the analysis. Uh, what you see on the screen is um, uh, the slide four. We're looking at um, the 
to work or the professional careers, the breakup of the professional careers. So you will see that um, many of the categories in their entry level to um, other positions. However, one of the interesting things about this response to uh, the professional careers is what they, the majority, 20% falls in the other category, which does not fit any of the employed categories or any of the normal top management, entry level, or operational fields. So we're probably looking at more consulting positions. Uh, um, this is something we still need to work out. The years of experience is very clear. We've uh, had 15 plus uh, years of experience, those people who are responding to this survey mostly. Country of residence, as I mentioned before, it has been uh, mainly for, uh, the interest has been from India. Um, there are, have been other respondents from other countries. However, they also seem to be, the survey actually shows the data is mainly of, um, at least the people are of Indian ethnic origin. So when we looked at the survey for an analysis, we did a whole lot of cross tabulations um, and factor analysis and correlations. Some of the major, uh, major things which came up, uh, things which we did is we looked at India versus other countries and a female versus male perception. So out of that emerged that the financial commitment towards family emerges as the main influences for, for men taking up careers in India as well as other countries. And financial commitment is not a major factor in case of women in general and particularly in case of women in other countries outside of India. So we are now in slide seven. So when we look at motivations to uh, pursue a career, for both men and women, personal aspirations and financial independence scores the highest. The financial commitments for the family is not the only reason they work for. Family culture background is most irrelevant to pursue a career. So these are some of the uh, uh, responses we got as um, in regards to personal aspirations as well as financial independence. So opportunity to create new ideas and products that touch lives of many people excites me. This is one of the responses. So aspirations towards um, leadership and uh, belief in myself are my motivations. Um, I want to make a difference to this world. Um, some of these responses um, clearly say um, something a lot more than uh, financial independence. Um, with regard to financial uh, independence, it says commitment gives uh, a certain kind of meaning to my life. This is financial commitment. It makes me feel I'm valuable doing more than just managing a family. Financial independence is extremely important and brings a sense of self-worth. Some of these are very strong motivations to pursue a career. Now, the next cross tabulation we did was the top influences uh, about career positions. 80% of the sample indicates that the personal aspirations and self-motivation are major factors that influence a career. We're on slide 10. Around 77% of male and 92% of the female respondents from India have considered this as a major factor. In other countries, as against India, 81% of the male um, perhaps, and 67% of the females consider this as a significant factor. This is personal aspirations and self-motivation. With financial independence um, is also a major factor that influences careers. For 66% of Indian men and 54% of men outside of India, 72% Indian women and 60% of women outside of India think financial independence is a major factor which influences their careers. Um, inspiration and encouragement from family, from the tabulations we find that 80% of Indian men and women both consider this as a big influence and 70% of male and female respondents in other countries consider it as significant. So with these uh, findings from um, the cross tabulations, I will now pass on to Aarti who will uh, take it on from here to talk about career enablement. Aarti. Thanks uh, Chandana. Hi everyone. So uh, women usually find company sponsorship to study further as their uh, basic motivation for career enablement, support systems, uh, especially from spouse, family and society, 
training programs to build new skills and enhance their career choices and legal implications or discrimination promoted by feminists. Um, we do also have um, voices from the male where they say being given new challenges with trust are the reasons for them uh, for career enablement while having a strong mentor and visionary leaders also working independently and time provisioning for training or taking time off are reasons for time for career enablement. Uh, slide 12. So while we also have uh, women saying that uh, the former uh, company offered extensive training programs, selected staff to build new skills and enhance the career choices. Uh, for example, we have specific uh, instances as well where people who worked for 13 years of consulting firms gave them broad and deep experiences and there were also sp some specific environmental issues and, uh, and family related uh, reasons. For the men it has majorly remained trust and people show uh, and when, when they get assigned some specific examples here are very acknowledged and as visionary leaders and uh, also supporting the organization for health issues and uh, own a vision but they do get higher grades. I'm on to slide um, 14. So we, are, we have a chart there to share with you what, cha what influenced a job change both for the men and the women. So we see that women mostly changed for working closer to home to have flexible hours or better work from home options um, whereas we have doubled the percentage as reasons for men. So they change jobs with respect to mentors and is there something that we need to learn from them? Uh, do we also look beyond just family options uh, is a thought that this slide is probing us to think. Slide 16. So top factors as women have shared reasons for their uh, job change is family, gender issues, better career opportunities and independence, work and life balance and probably stagnations and saturations from the same job. We do have the men speak saying better role in directing a company uh, is what they looked for and wanted to become an entrepreneur themselves or relocation geography wise. Slide 16. We have specific examples of uh, how uh, in a particular scenario they were toxic environments which led them to change and uh, even where the environments were very focused on male dominated or where there were kids going to preschool and their varying schedules helped with factors for them for a job change. Men have remained to take a break uh, for corporate reasons, uh, to experience entrepreneurship and also if uh, there is a new dimension that they are getting in new jobs that led them for a job change. Slide 17. So we now have here a graph as to those who really took a career break and what were the reasons. So as we see we have the women having taken more breaks than the men over there and the decision was purely based on their choice and today women are not regretting their choice for taking a break. Uh, 19 to 50 percent of women cite having taken a break uh, whereas only 6 to 19 percent of men have taken a break. So women and both men as we said have no regrets for having taken a break. Top factors now slide 18 uh, for having taken a break are women usually cite having a child, looking after the children and meeting expectations from family or society, uh, better work life balance, male domination uh, and uh, health issues or related to stress at workplace. Whereas men cite being laid off at work, not finding a satisfying role, better work-life balances, choosing retirement or wanting to try entrepreneurship instead of working as an organization. Slide 19. We will now talk about career inhibitors. So we see that men and women agree that there is little sponsorship coming from organizations. That's the peak of the graph which is showing lack of organization sponsorship 
while most men have mentioned as we see on the blue area women state they lack having mentors and support to return back to work uh, as one of the career inhibitors slide uh, slide 20 as we see uh, we see two graphs uh, support versus lack of it for both women and men so we see the pink uh, slide indicating that women have received least support in areas of mentoring and organization support 35% to 40% respectively and men have received a lot more support uh, in almost all the reasons as we see on the slide slide 21 carry inhibitors continues to be like male focused environments getting away from it gender biases perceptions that women are difficult to work on work life and flexibility required we also have the men saying financial commitments and job security inhibitors from risk curbing of uh, women independence and uh, micromanagement of seniors uh, we'll move to slide um, 22 and uh, so they, there are specific instances of career inhibitors as told by women where female managers were themselves trying to make it difficult for the women uh, they were male focused environments as well which was a major inhibitor and there is in entrenched beliefs that women are difficult to work with uh, there are specific instances where supervision has led the reason why men get paid more than women probably we have the men who are saying that financial commitments and job security in all volatile IT market inhibits uh, sometimes uh, we're taking risks lack of quality mentoring as an inhibitor uh, as one of the major reasons and being perceived as a threat by seniors I now uh, hand over to Renu my colleague uh, for the remaining slides Renu over to you Renu Hi ladies, it looks like we've lost her. Um, the audio, the black box had dropped, so I don't think that she has the ability to use the audio. Is it possible that one of you can cover her section? Aruti, you can continue. Hello, sorry friends, uh, my, uh, our friend Renu is uh, having a bit of an audio problem, we will speak in on her behalf. Uh, so speaking about the same thing that Renu was mentioning of slide 33, factors which were affecting acceptab acceptability of women leaders and as we see, uh, it's majorly been women perceive themselves as not as so capable as men for leadership positions probably men accept women much more than women feel they are accepted by men so this is what the survey interestingly fed it out to us uh, we now go to slide 24 uh, limitations to consider women in leadership now these are some of the excerpts of male voices where we had some uh, people uh, men state that they worked with real wonderful women and uh, many of them have um, been uh, abusing women policies until a woman treats a man as a colleague and another employee then looking as a gender it's difficult for someone to take this as a lead and there are also some instances where there has been lack of inspiration or self confidence to reach at the top and this probably is because um, uh, more than 10 women employees only say, cite this as a vision for their future but I think they need to get up on the enthusiasm front 
So even though as we have a lot of women enabling progress for career progression, uh, there shouldn't be an issue as they see it for considering themselves to hold higher positions of interest. We have various uh, instances of male voices uh, spread across slide 25, 26, 27 and 28. And what I would like to do is invite a discussion with Chandana and uh, help help share uh, instances around what this could be. Uh, before we get there, I would like to draw your attention to slide 29, where we have what were the critical qualities for successful women leaders, which was asked as a question across the male and the female professionals. And as we see, men and women are almost in alignment with their thoughts on the critical qualities which they need, a woman needs to have to belong to the leadership position. These are decision making, risk taking, professionalism, stakeholder management, creativity and innovation, personal branding, courage, conviction, result orientation and influencing skills. Uh, however, on slide 30 as we see, how far have a women really been from where they believe they really need to be? So we see the blue line which says where women need to be and we see the green area where they really have been. So we see that there is very much alignment in almost all the areas uh, but I think women need to think uh, and upgrade a lot more on handling situations of stakeholder management, influencing skills and personal branding. So these three areas appear as per our survey to be a bit short lived where, where women really want to be in these areas and women perceive themselves not so capable as men for leadership positions, probably these three areas are standing out from the entire other graph. Uh, taking your attention to slide 31, critical qualities for women in leadership. As they speak, women feel effective communication, clarity of thoughts, strong listening skills, playing a team, agility and Bearing ridicule are the critical qualities. We have the men who say that there should not be a difference in what a woman or a man need to belong to the leadership positions. They, however, they, they state something interesting that women need to curb emotions at workplace. Uh, they need to practice more social skills. And women don't lack qualities, but it is the ability to identify is what they feel. And the, this is an advice not to micromanage. So that's about slide 31. Chandana, over to you on any thoughts, please, uh, to summarize. Okay. There seem to be a very long list of things. Um, and uh, maybe uh, from both our experiences and also with the survey respondents, maybe we have some thoughts about what are the real emerging skills? What are the critical qualities that emerged? Um, from your perspective, um, I think from my perspective, it was about more about decision making. The ability to make decisions on the spot did emerge as um, both as a calculate in the analysis as well as in the voices that we hear. Um, many many people, uh, including men and women, uh, who are successful, actually comment that women are generally indecisive when it comes to making a decision on the spot. And that is a big inhibitor even um, in India or whether it is overseas. Uh, I don't know how much you agree with this, okay? so maybe you can comment. Yeah, uh, to represent uh, a bit of the Indian geography which has a major uh, representation on the survey, I would agree that uh, there is a factor of uh, default guilt building in that happens when women start aligning a bit more towards their career aspirations because they feel family gets let uh, down. There is a natural expectation irrespective of, irrespective of geography that a woman is the prime stakeholder uh, to bring up the culture and the family. So I think a woman undergoes, um, undergoes that pressure of, of trying to manage herself between, between both. But she's been doing a wonderful job irrespective of uh, geographies. Yes, there is a natural uh, guilt feeling that, that sets in. What do you think we can uh, uh, we can share as thoughts to help our women colleagues overcome that? I think uh, I think uh, from my perspective, uh, there are two things. Uh, one of the things is we are naturally wired in such a way that we are we are capable of taking decisions, but we are not able to do it. 
because we are wired in that way that culturally we are wired that way. We are expected to give that um, decision making to a male. And that always reflects on the profession as well, to a certain extent. This is what I think. Um, and from whatever I've experienced as a professional, um, being in Australia, it's quite different. Um, in fact, it is actually not very different. Uh, the thought process is not very different here either. Uh, here also, people, uh, women tend to think that um, it's better that the male take the decision. Um, it's very rare that women actually do take the risk and move forward. And those who do, they really do. So um, it, it does require a lot of change uh, in mindset in the women themselves, as well as the future generations. If you are educating your male child the same way, they're going to continue the tradition. So you probably need to make a mind shift um, there as well. I think you... As uh, mothers, as well as professionals. Yeah. I think you made a, what I, yeah, think. I think you made a very valid point about uh, changing the mindset of the sons at home and upbringing of the future generation children we have. Uh, I would also like to cite instances where we've seen that uh, there are women who smartly managed both. They've taken all help, all support that is required, be it on the uh, on the family support front. Uh, be to upbring the child uh, and his education. They are women who manage both successfully and they don't see any regrets. Uh, most of this is possible because of the mindset that you mentioned that they found equal support given by their spouse and uh, by their spouse at home and by their uh, male counterparts at work. So not because just because they are women but mm -hmm. I think because they were, they were treated they were taken as uh, a leader in potential, having probably the same issues as any as any male colleague would have, and that is how they were seen, and that was a major reason for their success. Yeah, um, when you take the case of India, Diana has made a point here, a comment here that is probably because the male uh, they don't men don't see female mothers co-workers was role models working outside. Most of the countries, what, what happens is the female is usually um, just a side who support um, the male in even in the financial commitment. It's not their career, it's not their thing. I have a completely different perspective on this. Um, although I was ethnically from India, I'm from a matriarchal society. So in our families, um, we inherit um, everything from the mother. So. It was a shock to my system when I entered the professional world and I started seeing some of the things which do exist. Fortunately for me, I've actually moved on and uh, lived somewhere else, um, which does not actually, to a certain extent, it solves the problem, but it's not really the end of the, it's not the ultimate solution. We really need to change the mindset to a certain extent. We have to become role models for not only other women, but also men. The sons need to see that um, Indian women are role models in workplaces as well. And only then the whole um, sea change can happen. And we may be a long way off, but I think you can make a start. Yeah, I, I, think, uh, the, I think you're right, uh, Chandana. What I would like to add on, however, is uh, that it, it is a critical support we do have a uh, single career professionals, be it men or women, who've still made it, uh, who's been who've been single parent, who've still gone through the grind of supporting family and profession together. So I think time has come where the mindset between uh, uh, women getting more liberation to care to perceive her career aspirations vis-a-vis -vis the men should go and it should be taken as an equal opportunity for both to contribute. Um, at home um, and at workplace, uh, so they don't see they, they undo the point of gender bias anymore, and they see e each other as just colleagues uh, without the gender bias. Yes. That is an important point because uh, if you see it like that, in most of the places where um, the equal partnership works is when um, you don't have the gender bias, and we actually see them as probably as buddies or colleagues rather than uh, female or male uh, with different uh, problems. And in some countries, here in Australia, you have 
that to an extent in the sense if you have a child both the parents are supposed to be on leave oh that's really um, and you have to take it so yeah. whether, whether it is um, whether you like it or not you need to take it and you have got to look after the child equally so to make that to implement it people struggle still but they do it they have to do it so um, I have a colleague currently who's had a baby uh, uh, they've had a baby and uh, it's definitely he is forced to take leave from the university otherwise he'll lose his job wow that's really nice so that is the kind of extremes you need to go to sometimes to uh, make this work it may work and um, maybe it'll all collapse but we have to think positive in that right. sense there's another point i would like to bring uh, to notice here is fortunately and very fortunately india has a social support system there is a family here there is an it's elderly uh, there is elderly support there are in-laws or there are parents who stand in for you to look after your siblings or they stand in for your difficult time so you can focus on your work uh, i think uh, i think professionals female professionals in the indian geography have enjoyed a lot of luxury over there probably this could be one of the reasons where you will find a lot more role models on the professional front here but i do see how probably women on the other geographies struggle a lot more than women in the indian geography would because they don't have the luxury of so much mm. um bit motivational on one side of the story we do have that um we do have when you have a child if you don't have a partner who's strong okay, enough you do struggle yes. because uh, yes. then you don't have a support system okay. which is very true mm. but at the same time um indian women do have a lot of social support but do you actually utilize it to actually grow in your career it is the mindset which again stops you and i don't understand that um, anymore but um, that's just coming from an individual perspective but i think uh, we do take the social system for granted and we continue with that at the same time we don't actually aspire to be more how many people aspire to study further oh i i that is here we actually see people with children coming back to study and grow in their careers after so it is it is a quite an ask but i you do have it i hear some typing hard typing so it's getting difficult for me to hear you but uh, um but yes what do you know actually you're breaking up too okay i did hear some disturbance so i just thought of uh, i i do see uh, dns comments they saying yes these are some smart ideas couples do move to other cities where there is a lot more support and um, and that really happens and there are a lot of such instances even here in this part of the geography uh, this is more for support mm. it interestingly creates more lot more job opportunities as well even on the support front required but today um, if i can infer a lot uh, women are no less competent uh and no less motivated than men when they want to make it their career uh of interest and uh, all that it needs is to pursue that goal pursue that and not let it go because you saw instances of some failures around your environment not to let that go and to pick the success stories get it in a lot of support possible and probably keep going if i can cite and Uh, a quote from one of the women leaders who said you know in an age of uh, a career professional a woman who would work for like 40 years uh, um, it's okay to take a break for 2 or 3 years it's okay to have a child and have a break after that how how does it matter for a career long tenure of uh, of uh, 40 years it, it really shouldn't matter is a thought and i think there's a very good uh, thought we shouldn't get bogged down by the fact that we took short breaks and we should let that to um, discount on the capabilities we carry when we join back work uh, i think that mm-hmm. these are some messages uh, we women need to reiterate and not give up working especially when it comes mm-hmm. to the leadership pos- leadership position uh, the thing 10 times to take the step forward um, because it's basically their mindset that they probably won't make it uh, or won't make justice to both the areas well i think that's what stops they inhibit themselves 
and uh, to cite back men men are suggesting the women folk to not to get into the trap they are suggesting that don't look at yourself uh, and don't inhibit yourself to keep going ahead i think there's a lot more welcome uh, symptoms from the male um, uh, community as we see in our as we see in our support as we see in our uh, survey report they they're looking forward for women to come in and take the leadership positions um if i cite another example uh, there's a leader who has his staff of five men and a woman and uh, he put it on the five male co colleagues to say that uh, i'm going to choose my next successor to be the woman uh, as the successor but i would uh, put your performance appraisals for the rest of you five to build her and to make her a successful leader it was fabulous to hear we need that kind of a mindset mm. we need that kind of a cultural enablement coming in from the men folk at work and uh, it won't be surprising to see women we are we are almost there yeah i think uh, from my viewpoint what i hear from here is also it is not the men who are actually the problem creators for women or inhibitors really it's women themselves um either themselves or the people who are uh, women bosses about them and we find a lot of that in australia um whereas if men to seems to encourage people to go forward um you sort of see women blocking that which is another disconcerting kind of an issue that's very um strange sometimes but um women seems to be their own biggest enemy as well and it also comes through in many of the uh, survey uh, instances you've seen the comments um it does come through in many ways women are their own their best enemy as well best friend as in, and as well as enemies so probably there is a cultural issue there which we need to look at now okay, looking at cultural issues i see a I question think, a few uh, questions here i think here. somebody should be because i hear a lot of uh, background noise uh, my side i'm not sure if chandra you are getting those disturbances no it's not from here actually i can hear you brother okay great so let me so um sonja has asked if there was any data that showed interest from an early stage versus other factors i'm not sure uh, if i understand the question could you actually um explain that i think what sonja yep questions yeah. Sonja, you're talking about Sonja, right, Chandana? Yeah. She's posted a question here. Yeah. I think um, she tried. I'm to, still not sure yeah, what it I is. Think, um, I can see a question online, so if I can just tell. Early stage. Yeah, earlier in your. We don't have responses from early stage from uh, less than three years. So we've only got the responses are mainly from three years plus, and we've looked at experienced professionals. Because we're looking at leadership positions. So. Yes. Uh, yes, please. She's going to clarify the question. Um, what about the cultural? Uh, Research deals with cultural and social issues, with some structural included. I'm not still not clear about that question either. Yes, uh, in fact, uh, if you see the slide where we spoke of the years of experience, the people who took the survey um, took. most of them were uh, greater than 15 years of experience so 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 there is data that shows interest from early stage versus other factors um, so most of the respondents early stage in the sense uh, I, i'm not too sure about that question because i'm not sure if she is asking if anybody was interested in becoming a leader from earlier or is it something else Um there is another question here she says that uh, the researchers indicated that indian support centers were turning 
around the numbers of women in technology as they attract more women. Um, I've got a very interesting thought on this. Um, India has more, um, software industry particularly is almost uh, inundated with women in India. If you take the question of Australia, women do not enter the IT field at all. It's concerned, it's still considered a male territory. Whereas if you look at the typical engineering colleges in India, men stay off software. They prefer other kind of engineering because it's considered more male. So um, it, it is a very culturally, um, culturally biased kind of approach. If you ask any women here, they literally shy off from IT positions. I don't know if that answers your question. Sonja. I would agree with uh, Sonja's question, at least from the Indian front, because um, uh, uh, there are a lot more numbers of women who feel tech has attracted them more. Um, they find a lot more um, comfortable with tech jobs. Probably women also believe uh, they come with a natural tendency of more um, IQ, like a mindset. So yes, there is uh, a lot of uh, attraction to the tech world of, by women. Uh, you will find a lot of that in the Indian job of Sanja. Yeah. I think we've answered that question. Is there anything else? Anyone else or any clarified questions? Anyone? Yeah, so I think what I would like to share uh, a few parting thoughts, Chanjana, and I would request you also to share uh, for the benefit of, of us women being 8th March today and happy Women's Day all of you. Uh, I think every day is a Women's Day and I think we have, uh, we are nearly there. We just need to have a lot more confidence in taking up the leadership positions we just, which we just let go of uh, uh, because we feel we are not there. But let's once again hear to the survey and let's once again hear to what the uh, what the men community have been saying uh, as you will see on, on that particular slide where they say uh, you women are already leaders, don't inhibit yourselves um, and come forward, take up the leadership positions, we are there to support you. We have ample instances to share with you where we have supported and we need you more than anybody else because women leadership in the corporate world bring in, brings in a great balance of cultural and emotional and motivational um, uh, trends as well which is as much needed as uh, business decisions uh, and tough decisions being taken. I think we need to make this uh, um, in equal combination stand up with the men and uh, and take up those opportunities where men colleagues actually want us to see to see there they really want to see us there in the high uh, and uh, high up leadership positions um some of the things which i have um in a, in a kind of wrapping up the uh, thing is also that we have still got the survey open for some more time so that, uh, you know, if anyone would like to, if women in ICT would like to fill in, um, there are details on this um, in this presentation. Uh, we are also thinking about uh, TRIAPAL to looking at bringing out an ebook as well as a research, uh, research book and a few research articles. So if you have questions, um, if you can comment um, on um, things which you would, would like to know, uh, we are happy to do more analysis on this. We are still looking at, there's um, a lot of analysis being done and we are still working on it further. Uh, we are happy, welcome to welcome anyone who has any questions, uh, anyone who would like feedback, um, any comments, anyone. Unfortunately, our colleague Renu, uh, who has done a lot of groundwork, could not make it with the uh, technical issues with her connection. Um, so we had to um, take her, take it from there. Um, I'm sure that she would have been um, quite insightful in many many areas, particularly. Right. Is there any other things, thoughts, parting thoughts, Arati? 
I think uh, we've covered the points that we intended to share with the community, Chandana. And uh, we will be keeping the survey open. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so we look forward for uh, more responses. Uh, and hmm. we have uh, more. Yes, we definitely would like more responses in the survey wherever, whichever part of the world you are, men or women, try and take the survey. We get more um, value out of the survey the more people we have. So, all right. Um, it was all um, started, this whole survey started with uh, Arti thinking about women and to me trying to see what we can do um, in to help and then Renu joining us with uh, uh, her. Um, interest and excitement uh, so effectively um, definitely we have a lot more to ground to cover here and uh, thank you everyone uh, particularly uh, Diana for all your support with all the technical hiccups and hang-ups uh, but we've I think we've covered enough ground for today thank you bye all of you and enjoy Great. Thanks a so great much for a really great session. And I think this is just the beginning of a great conversation uh, and an ongoing conversation as more data becomes available. So thanks so much for launching this. It's an excellent idea. Thank you. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you.